in this cabinet course we are going to first discuss about the docker then we will move towards uh, kubernetes in our case we have already set up the lab of uh, three systems in our case the lab will look like this that we have got three systems kubernet m mean master system kubernet worker 1 kubernet worker 2 so these are the three systems involved or we can say uh, three vms are available each vm has been given 4 gb ram that mean total uh, we are using 4 gb 4 gb 4 gb uh, three virtual machines we are using for the uh, lab setup and uh, on all three systems docker is installed and a kubernet cluster has been implemented on the system this will behave like a master system these two are going to behave like a, a node system or worker systems so three node cluster we have already implemented we are going to see how we implemented this cluster uh, we will go into the detail of that but before understanding kubernet properly we need to understand the docker so we are going to discuss about docker what is docker or we can say hey, what is the difference between the vms uh, and containers uh, uh, where we use the term VM and where we are going to use the term containers. So when we talk about, uh, uh, first we need to talk about uh, uh, virtualization because once we have understood the virtualization, then we uh, can easily understand the Docker also. Now like in my case, uh, on my laptop, I have got uh, a 16 GB of RAM, i7 is the processor, and almost uh, 1250 GB of hard disk. Now, if I am going to run only one operating system there, in my case, my host operating system, mean with the laptop, Windows 10 is there. So if I'm going to run only Windows 10 with uh, so much uh, resources, then this is a wastage of our resources. Uh, so in case, in my case or in your case, uh, what we can do we can implement the virtualization that mean uh, in like in my case uh, i have on my laptop i have implemented the virtualization and when we talk about virtualization many solutions are available like in my case uh, uh, in my case the hardware is i7 16 gb ram ssd hard disk so that is hardware on that, in my case, uh, host operating system is window. Now on that window, what we can do? We can install virtualization software. It could be VMware Workstation. It could be VirtualBox. It could be Hyper-V. And in all these series, we can um, uh, install any operating system. It could be Linux. It could be window. Like uh, when we set up this Kubernetes lab, this is uh, my virtualization solution VMware workstation and uh, these uh, are the three VMs and uh, uh, these uh, are Linux based VMs. So three VMs that mean uh, my Linux systems are running one, two and three system are running and we call these as a virtual machines. Now what happens sometimes if uh, instead of uh, Windows uh, your host operating suit could be Linux so again uh, on hardware uh, we can install linux as a host operating system then again virtualization software vmware workstation is available for linux also virtualbox also for linux and uh, in uh, linux we have got one xen also which support two type of virtualization full virtualization and para virtualization if you are using full virtualization that mean we can install any guest operating system. It could be Windows, it could be Linux. But if we are using para virtualization, only you can install Linux. That means if you are going to uh, use any of these uh, virtualization solutions, what you can do, you can launch the virtual machines or we can say VM. The advantage is it is efficient. That means instead of having one operating system, we can install many like in my case i have got on my laptop more than 80 uh, operating systems but uh, 80 does not mean that uh, simultaneously i can run a uh, 80 machines uh, four to five machines or vms can i can easily uh, run uh, simultaneously 
Now sometimes what happens in virtualization, this host layer is vulnerable, very vulnerable. Uh, that means um, if suppose I have got 80 VMs and uh, when I'm go uh, if this host operating system is going to get corrupt, what will happen? These all 80 machines will not be available. And uh, this is uh, uh, the most vulnerable layer when we talk about the virtualization. So what is the solution? We have got one another solution available that is called hypervisor. That means on hardware uh, state where we can install uh, this hypervisor. The hypervisor is also called uh, bare metal also or sometimes we call these as a cloud operating system also. That means on hardware we can install the hypervisor and in that hypervisor again we can um, launch the virtual machine. And what are the hyper different hypervisor available? It could be VMware, AXI, Citrix, Xen, KVM, Hyper-V. These are the various hypervisors available. That means these are more robust than the virtualization because we have eliminated that host uh, layer or uh, need of host operating system. But again, whether you are using virtualization of or hypervisor, you are going to get the VMs. Now, what is the problem with VMs? Now, like in my case, uh, when I was I am using this uh, um, uh, VM, I have to allocate 4 GB, and hard disk I have to give 40 GB. Same way to this uh, Kubernetes W1, uh, Kubernetes W2, I have given 4 GB RAMs. That means uh, already 12 GB has been used and 40 GB here, 40 GB here, 40 GB here. That means there is a limitation how many machines, virtual machine I can run. So again, let us move there. So what what is the drawback? So let us first uh, go into this. Uh, uh, what is the uh, difference between, uh, what is the problem with virtualization? Now, when we are talking about the virtualization, please remember whenever we have to create the VMs, uh, we need uh, ISO files. And ISO files could be from 700 MB to 6.5 GB. And uh, when we are creating the VMs, uh, with the storage required is from 4 GB to uh, it could be up to 60 GB and when we are going to install these v uh, VMs it can take uh, between 15 to 35 minutes and the boot time of uh, these VM is generally 20 to 40 seconds. Now we that means the resources used are very large. Now we want certain solution which is very lightweight so that is where your docker comes that mean on hardware again we need certain operating system the preferred operating system is always uh, linux and on that we can install docker and what we can do on docker we can create the uh, containers and please remember we can with the uh, docker we cannot use the term vms in dockers we are always going to create the um, containers now what is the advantage of the containers if we are going to compare it with the virtualization the advantage of a docker is that uh, the for creating the containers we do not need the isos we need docker images the size of those images is hardly between 4 mb to 100 mb most of the images and when we are going to create the container hardly uh, they, uh, they take seconds uh, to launch these containers and storage is very negligible less than 1 MB and creation time is uh, again uh, in second and uh, moreover uh, when we are installing docker it is very easy itself docker uh, take very less space and so that is why it is we call this as a lightweight virtualization also so that mean if we talk about docker this is very lightweight uh, technology sometimes we call this as a magic technology so that mean whenever we are talking about uh, docker 
uh, we are going to get uh, containers when we are talking about uh, virtualization or hypervisor we are going to get the vms so that is the advantage now why this uh, docker is uh, uh, uses so many less resources so this is the basically structure of uh, virtual machines and containers when we talk about virtual uh, machine hardware host operating system is there then virtualization software is there uh, and then when we are uh, going to create the vms we need a whole operating system that mean guest os binaries libraries application whole that is why uh, it uh, requires so much uh, storage space but when we talk about containers again hardware host operating system is there then uh, docker is there now in this uh, uh, what we do we use the uh, host operating systems kernel that mean only we requires binaries or libraries and applications so containers are there uh, for very lightweight that mean the docker container consists of just applications and their dependency it runs using host operating system as isolated user space process containers share the same kernel containers are very efficient and portable so that is why uh, the industry and is quickly moving towards the container concepts and uh, now we will see how to create the containers and, uh, and then how to manage those containers that we are going to look at once we have understood uh, docker and containers we can then um, uh, then we are going to move towards the kubernetes and then it will understanding kubernetes uh, then is going to be relative very easy